Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and I'm here to talk about Ian Lee's um, Where Reasons End, which is a 2019 publi uh, published in 2019. Uh, it's like a novelette or novella or something like that, short novel, uh, that's sort of told about this mother and child in a kind of timeless world uh, after the child has committed suicide, which reflects something that happened in her actual life. Um, so it's her working her way through grief and trying to figure all of that out and what it means, uh, what it means to be a mother and, and have this loss and all these kind of things. It reads in a very academic style. Um, this is my first book by her, so I don't know if that is common, but, um, yeah, it, 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 it's a little, like, it, it focuses very much on words and, like, what they mean and how that uh, affects relationships and uh, changes relationships and these kind of things, and it has all these moments with Nikolai, who is the name of the child, um, that are sort of a different a cycle uh, that goes over time, but um, things don't really change, and they just constantly have conversations as uh, the mother in the story uh, works through her grief. And I've been looking forward to Yin Lee's, Yin Lee's, I hope I'm saying it right, um, work. Uh, maybe this was not the best place to start. Uh, it's very personal. And there are aspects about it that I do enjoy. Uh, because I, I just think, like, it feels... Um, I can Like, I can feel it, in a way. You know, it, it does feel heartfelt and all that. However, it also does feel strongly didactic in a way and it's like there's a huge chasm uh, and split between uh, the emotion of this story and the presentation of the story. Um, here is a little bit of it that I think is actually pretty interesting. It's like a little metaphor that the mother and son are talking about because she's trying to understand why and how and what what happened uh, this comes about two-thirds of the way through um, uh, though i didn't own it i said it was a spinning top that the big kids used to whip around in the courtyard but even if you don't know what it looks like i do mommy i'm not stupid and i know you're going to use it as a bad analogy you're going to say we are the spinning tops, and fear whips us, and hope whips us. So fear and hope must be the same thing. I thought for a moment, no, that's not what I meant to say. Or you're going to say, hope is the spinning top, and fear whips it. No, I said. Fear is the spinning top, and hope whips it. No! Then you're going to say the most refreshing thing. Fate, oh fate, oh fate, it's you who's whipping us, Nikolai said. Stop putting words in my mouth. It doesn't matter who or what is whipping us, I said. Whatever it is, it's not doing that all the time. So my question is, what keeps us going then? Fear or hope? Scientifically speaking, it's rotational inertia, he said. So hope is a kind of inertia? Fear too, I said. Oh, mommy, you're getting so muddle-headed. I'm muddle-headed, I thought, because I could go on thinking but would not reach any clarity which, between hope and fear, had made life unlivable for him. Uh, I've never called life unlivable, he said. I've never lived a single day without something that matters to me, something that I live for, but not a single day with just the frivolous. What in my life would belong only to the frivolous? Not music, I thought. Not literature, nor sport, nor friendship, baking, cooking, knitting, gardening, shopping for kitchenware, yarn, scarves, colorful socks. 
Choosing gifts for friends, intensity, making frivolousness unattainable, yet all those that have meanings have weight too. Can a ship sail when it is loaded with what it is not equipped to carry? I have sailed, he said, in my way. Uh, that was quite a long quote, but uh, this is one of these moments that I actually do really like. Uh, it, it is this argument between mother and child in this timeless space. <laughs> um, uh, about an analogy and it's just her trying to figure out like, what could have been different what went wrong where what happened was there an imbalance of fear or hope were you lost in hope and maybe hope your hope crashed and burned or fear you were overcome with fear or something and uh, you know maybe something it, things were too frivolous or whatever uh, I mean, she's just sort of scrambling for for an explanation and for reason. Uh, but this is where reasons end, um, <laughs> I suppose, uh, which comes... This book has a lot of poetry in it um, and begins with, uh, begins with a poem in which the title of the book is taken. And I do enjoy me some poetry, so that also was a benefit for me. Um, overall, the only thing, the thing that I really don't like about it is the very end when it sort of points out that, yeah, this is actually based on a true thing and they're going to get the idea that I got this from my real life. I'll let them think what they want. This kind of conversation right at the end. I already know it's autobiographical. And it's like an, a writing experiment to try and process the grief and all that. I'm okay with that. I don't really like... I, I'm up and down, up and down. I don't really like autobiographical fiction. But in this case, it's okay for me. But when it's like, oh, I bet they're going to say you got this idea. I can't stand that. <laughs> so I really don't like the very end of it. Uh, the rest of it, mixed bag for me. And that's all I've got to say. I will be giving her another chance because this might have been uh, deeply, maybe too personal and in a way too academic and whatever. And Because the parts that really shine, the parts that I really enjoy, like that part, I think show some great promise. There are a few other parts, but uh, this has gone on long enough. And uh, yeah, thank you.